Welcome back to Everything EOS, the longest running EOS podcast. I'm here with my partner in crime, Chaney Moore from Crypto Raider, EOS Raider. Uh, and uh, we have our second guest uh, from our EOS VC series. Uh, we interviewed uh, Galaxy Digital about a month ago. Uh, we're here with Stefan from FinLab AG. FinLab AG is a publicly traded company on the German stock market. Um, they're also the fund managers of the $100 million EOS VC fund. Uh, what's up, Stefan? Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for um, inviting me here that I can uh, discuss with you um, our, our EOS fund, our portfolio, and um, maybe you can learn a little bit more about me and what FinLab is doing. So uh, definitely, um, I appreciate that you invited me here to your podcast. Of, of course. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you took the time to do it. I know it's a Friday night there. It's not necessarily convenient. So we appreciate <laughs> you have, having you here today. So really, like you said, uh, give us just a little bit more about, about your background. I can see on the website that you you joined uh, FinLab in 2013. What did you do beforehand and how did you uh, how did you find FinLab? Yeah, so my name is, as you mentioned, Stefan, and the last name is Schütze. It's just pretty, pretty um, awkward to, to pronounce when you're not from Germany here. So Stefan Schütze is my full name. Yeah, I'm 48 years old, um, based in Frankfurt right now. Uh, I started my career um, just in uh, January 2000, so a couple of years ago um, in Berlin. Um, I work for a venture capital company uh, based in Berlin. So I'm more or less than more than 20 years active in a startup um, business, startup ecosystem. After a couple of years in Berlin, I moved to Frankfurt and uh, worked for an asset manager. And um, after a couple of years, we renamed this company into FinLab AG. And since 2013, exactly as you mentioned, <clears throat> I'm the board member with my colleague Juan. So um, Juan and myself are the um, managing directors, board members, so to speak, um, for FinLab AG. And in 2014, we also changed the strategy of FinLab and um, was focusing totally on FinTech startup companies. So before, as I mentioned, it was more like a asset management company. So we invested in different kinds of uh, um, assets, not only, not only startups, not only FinTech. But in 2014, we said, okay, there is a good opportunity, great opportunity. Um, I'm on the startup business uh, since years. Juan is the finance guy with our company. So he's a CFO. He, his background is, of course, um, <clears throat> figures and numbers, which is also good to know. And uh, that you have something on your, <laughs> on your side that he's looking on the, on the, on the, on the financials. So, and then we have um, our team with me. Um, I think something um, they are... Um, also active on Twitter or LinkedIn, uh, Max, Theo, Nico, and Davis. So um, these six together are more or less an investment team at FinLab. We have, of course, um, more um, staff and more members, um, front office desk, assistance, HR, uh, bookkeeping, and so on. But um, the investment team um, is these are these six six members, as and um, one myself are also very active and very active involved in all these companies. Yeah, um, and. Um, how I find FinLab. I, I didn't find FinLab. They find me, so to speak. Um, and um, I work for FinLab now for years. And uh, hopefully, uh, yeah, we had very good success uh, with our FinTech portfolio. And um, beside our pure FinTech business that we have on FinLab AG, we have also a very relatively mature as a management business. And this as a management business means we managing different external funds. So in one of these external funds is a EOS or FinLab EOS VC Europe One fund we have uh, set up in 2018. So um, beside our FinLab um, EOS VC fund, we have also Heliad under management, we have Patriarch under management, all these um, are fund mandates we have. So um, FinLab is, so to speak, a hybrid venture capital company. So we're not only investing with our money, our own money, on our own balance sheet in fintech startup companies, we're also managing uh, different funds. And so it's, it's yeah, it's it's a special special company, I would say. It's not you, you pure startup company, not pure asset management company. It's something in between. Um, as you mentioned, we are stock listed privately, um, publicly stock listed on Frankfurt in a domestic market. So when you want to invest in FinLab, you can buy our share. Of course, uh, it's totally possible. 
<laughs> so that's good. Zach had shared something with me earlier about how FinLab works out. And, you know, there's things that you're an active investor in. There's things you're a general partner in. Uh, there's the things you're a, a multi-manager in. And then you have the fund manager where you're the USBC fund. As a fund manager, does, let me ask this question because I don't, I don't know. Did, uh, were, you, were you essentially said given access to $100 million and then that's how you go out and you use that money to, to uh, find potential projects that would use EOSIO or, or do you put some of your money in there and manage the combined funds yeah. or are you taking maybe a, a, a management fee on, on how, does that, how does that all work out? Yeah, first of all, first of all, the Finlip AOSVC fund is in a part partnership between Finlip AG and Block One. So both are limited partners. Finlip has invested in this fund, so we have our own money invested, and Block One has invested in this fund. Of course, a little bit larger ticket than Finlip, um, that's for sure. And and we get a management fee from from the fund, but of course, um, that is uh, a typically. Um, venture fund with typically venture terms, I would say. So a management fee and a carry for the management company, which is Finlip AG. But as we have invested our own money here, of course, our aim is to have a return of investment. So to understand what we are doing is, I think it's, it's, it's um, yeah, it's not a grant program and it's not a donation program because sometimes people reached out and um, sent it over some really nice projects on EOS IO or EOS, right? Um, but the business plan was not sustainable or it was not clear how they can earn money with this project. And then sometimes uh, I, I read it on Twitter, we got blamed that, oh, you yeah, don't have invested in these companies. These guys are so awesome. They are so, such a great um, EOS project, EOS IO project, and you didn't invest. Why do you reject this company? Um, to understand what we are doing is that we are a typically venture capital fund like any others outside in a startup ecosystem. So um, we perform our technical, legal, financial due diligence. When we got a project, um, a project on our table, um, the first criteria is always, of course, is this a project which utilize the EOSIO blockchain solution or is this something which has a relation to EOS? It is our first main criteria. It is also written in our LPA agreement. So um, we have agreed with Block One when we set up the fund in 2018 that the main criteria, of course, is that we invest money in companies which utilize EOSIO or has something to do with EOS. So when we look at the companies we got on our table, of course, the first thing is, is this EOS, is it not EOS? If it's not EOS, we cannot invest in. If it's a EOS project, or maybe they want to swap to EOS, EOSIO in the near future, we look deeper into the materials. And then we perform our due diligence. And that means also we look very, very um, intensive in a business plan. And sometimes, yeah, it's happened in a venture business uh, that you get more more project on the table that you invest in afterwards, that we have to reject a project which is not sustainable. Even, even if we like maybe the project or we like the management team or the, the founder team, so to speak, yeah, and say, okay, oh, great founder team, great project. It is on EOSIO, but how will you earn money? Because we cannot donate our money. As we are a publicly listed company, as you mentioned, and our shareholders are waiting a return of invest when we invest money and block one, did also. So um, let us think um, just to, to make it clear here, because sometimes I, I, I read on Twitter that, that, uh, that uh, there was some criticism why you have not invested in these companies. These companies were great companies, great projects. No, um, we cannot invest in companies that don't have a sustainable business plan. And as we are not a donation or a grant program, Block One, as you know, um, in 2019, I think they started some kind of a donation program. Yeah, so where they invested 50K in, in companies, it was purely donation. Of course, also investment on purpose that they want to see there's also a return of investment. But when you invest 50K, you know, okay, this is money. They cannot bring the company to success immediately. Yeah, they need more than the 50K. When we invest, um, basically, uh, we invest um, a seven-figure amount, um, sometimes with co-investors, sometimes as a lead investor, 
Um, we definitely want to see a return of invest. And as you also know, in the venture capital space, not every portfolio company will reach the goal line or will have success at the end. But our aim, our goal is always to find a company which has the potential to pay us back not only the money, uh, um, a relatively higher return because um, we invest in very early stage companies. Yeah? Um, as FinLab AG is an um, early stage or I would say Series A, pre-Series A investor, we have the same approach for our um, FinLab EOS VC fund. So, you know, Galaxy, I think Galaxy invested more in um, bigger tickets, bigger companies. We have invested in smaller um, more early stage CSA, pre-CSA, sometimes seed um, phase companies, which is a big difference. So um, you you don't know exactly when you invest will this company see the goal line, but our aim is always to find a company which can bring return and not only for us, for Block One and of course for the EOS um, ecosystem. Hey, I, and I want to just put out there for, for you, uh, and our listeners a little bit that, uh, you know, we have have reviewed a lot of, of the projects that you've you've invested in and to maybe allay some of what you're hearing on Twitter uh, and other places. Uh, really, FinLab has done an excellent job. I was just uh, and I want to commend you. Yeah, that, that you guys have have done a really good job uh, making sure that the projects that you're investing in uh, at, at least note their intent to utilize the USIO. Or EO. So we, we do appreciate that. Uh, so, and, and, and what is that? Some of the criticism may have even been from one, one of us or one of our friends. And it, it, it's mostly because of the way it was presented in 2018 was that it was going to kind of grow the EOS IO and EOS uh, like ecosystem. And with some of the other EOS VCs, it, it just seemed like there were a lot of investments that weren't even touching EOS IO like let alone EOS, which is the whole separate thing. But I, I appreciate the, the first criteria you stated was, does it utilize EOS or EOS IO? Like that's pretty much the first thing you check off your list. And I also want to highlight two notable projects that are running today on EOS mainnet or supporting it in case of Wombat is uh, Spielworks, which is the developers behind the Wombat wallet, which is one of the easiest onboarding tools for the EOS mainnet. It offers free EOS accounts where you can basically pay for your private keys afterwards. And then the other project is Upland, which is completely running on the EOS mainnet. And the, they're in the app store and the end users don't even know they're using a blockchain. And those are two really great projects. And I wish that we would see more like that from the other EOS VCs. And I'm sure there's more in the works like that with you guys. Um, but I just want to call out that yeah. the criticism you mentioned was mostly geared towards all of the other ones. I'm sure we can criti criticize anyone, but I just, once again, FinLab AG, FinLab ESVC, uh, we really appreciate the work you're doing uh, for EOS IO. No, um, thanks, 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 thanks for that. And uh, we appreciate um, that you, you, you see this here and um, uh, definitely our, our goal, our, our mission, our investment thesis was from the beginning to find projects with utilize EOSIO. And we know these companies are early stage companies and sometimes they have a delay in their business model. They have a delay in building something on a blockchain. Yeah, we know this. Mm -hmm. And um, also some companies we have invested in are more B2B business companies, which are not active on social media. So for example, Axum. Axum is dealing with the larger um, enterprises here in Germany or in the EU. So, um, but Axum is not so active on Twitter and LinkedIn. You don't find them there. So um, sometimes people ask me, oh, you have invested in companies you don't see or they are disappeared or what, what they are doing. So, no, not every company is B2C and uh, the B2B sector and the sales approach or the approach to attract uh, customers and clients is totally different than B2C customers, for example, Upland, as you mentioned, or Bombard, yeah, with, with, um, mm -hmm. with, a, with an easy um, open EOS wallet. Yeah. So, but um, also Sparrow, our, our trading uh, platform in Singapore, um, they, I think they will go live on a US uh, blockchain in, I think, Q2, April, May this year, with their smart contracts 
um, for for trading purposes. Um, also, um, a timeless. This is um, the company Gapless. They they change the name a little bit more on timeless. They will also be active on on a on a mainnet and um, Spark. Uh, we have invested last year in July. Spark has a retail product in a carbon space um, for investments for retail investors. They will use also the, the US um, IO blockchain. Um, Which one was that? Spark. Hmm. I need to look into that one. I don't, don't recall seeing that one. And I just want to call out the Gapless company that you mentioned. Um, I remember when the press release came out, uh, they had something to do with, with a relationship with Porsche. Yeah, Porsche is, in, is, is one of the investors in, 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 in Gapless. So that, that's... I mean, I think you just dropped some news right there. I appreciate you uh, dropping uh, some. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, I appreciate the, them them using uh, using EOS and EOS IO. That's awesome. Yeah, um, as, as as you said, uh, for example, um, Upland. I think Upland is we, we call it the main net. Yeah, because they doesn't they have more transactions than the EOS token itself. Yeah, so I think Upland is the most or the best performing company on a US I will main net and um, the protocol works pretty well. We have 10K daily and 30K monthly active users so far and they are supported without any problems. So the, the, the blockchain solution is perfectly um, working. So they have no problems with the, um, with the solution. So they don't have any complaint about it. And that's not only the, the best, I would say, EOS IO company in the portfolio um, because they was built on EOS IO from the beginning. Um, they are also the, one of the best um, uh, blockchain games outside there. Yeah? On a DRAP, you can see it. Um, I think it, it, it's, it's a great company. And if you have tried it so far, it's also fun. Um, yeah, so. Um, and they're active in the community, Stefan. They're, they're mm -hmm. around, uh, you know, you see them in the community and they, they interact with people. And it's, it's great, to, great to see their success here. Yeah, I think they will become the largest game, uh, definitely in the blockchain sector. Um, and uh, yeah, we we indicated this, this this company in a seed phase. Yeah, so there was seed round. Um, um, when you asked me how how we find our portfolio companies, of course there are different ways to find portfolio companies. Um, before COVID nineteen, we was active on so many conferences and um, exhibitions, blockchain exhibitions where we are yeah, looking for great companies, which maybe can be, uh, um, yeah, can be, can be an investment target for us. On the other side, um, we got so many projects via our um, info at finlib.de um, email. Um, but right now, um, our team is searching the sector and we are approaching by ourselves companies, which we think it's, it's, um, could be a good match for our, for our um, blockchain fund. And um, so, yeah, Gapless, for example, is a company we have identified. Um, Spielworks, for example, is one of from my network, for example. Axum is from our network. Um, Gapless, I mentioned. Some, some cool financial products that uh, press releases have come out recently. I have in my notes here. Uh, if you could just share a little bit with the audience of like a high level of what they're doing and maybe even how they're planning to use EOSIO. Um, Algo Trader was one of them, and then another one uh, called Agora, which are both like kind of like financial products. Are you able to share a little bit of information about what they're doing? Yeah, Agora, Agora is um, is, is a tokenization platform um, which will tokenize products and uh, projects on a um, EOS blockchain. So um, they are blockchain agnostic, of course. They can also do it on Ethereum, but they will do it on on um, EOS IO as well. So, and with all these companies, for example, also Agora and and and, um, and Algo Trader, we have agreed um, installments from our investment. So, when we invest, for example, we invest two million, we basically do not invest the full amount at once. So, basically, we invest one million at once because they need to to start their project. Of course, they need to hire people. Um, um, and then we invest installments, maybe 500K each in two installments, when they can prove us the achievements in their technical um, yeah, environment, technical product. And then they have to, to prove us um, that they are on the mainnet or on the sidechain. Um, 
And uh, that is then another technical diligence we perform. And when the criteria is met, when the um, milestone is met, then we pay out the first or second tranche of our investment. So that secures us a bit that companies come not to us and say, hey, oh, we are super excited of, um, from, from EOSIO and we want to bring one of our products on, on EOSIO and then blah, blah, blah. And afterwards, when we have invested, no, nothing happened, right? So um, we secure us a little bit with these um, installments and a milestone mechanism as um, brings a little bit more trust in both sides so that we can tell them, okay, then you can prove us that you did exactly what you yeah, presented us in your mm -hmm. sales pitch. Then you got the money. You but we got the, the incentives shares aligned is what you're doing. Everyone's incentives yeah. are aligned. They're incentivized to perform and you're incentivized not waste your money on a project that's not going to uh, fulfill exactly. the milestones that you set out for them. And the good thing is for the EOS fund and for the investors and for the EOS community, um, we got the shares um, already in full. We got the full amount of shares already. So we calculate the valuation of these company as they have already achieved or um, produced this product, which they have presented in their sales pitch. As we say, okay, when you come and say, okay, we are worth, for example, 10 million. Then we say, hmm, okay, let's think about, is this really worth 10 million so far? Okay, when you achieve your, your product you have mentioned here and um, with our money, then we believe in your valuation but we will not pay out our money at once. So uh, let's, let's arrange some milestones. And these milestones are not super high that they have to jump, um, okay, what they never can, can reach. So it's more like we say, okay, it's, it's related to the business plan they presented to us. You know, when the business plan will say, we have X time customers in Q3 2020, or we have X time this in Q4 2021, then okay, we say, let's put it in, in our milestone agreement. And when you reach these customers, these clients, or when you have this achievement in your product, then you got the money. If not, then we don't pay out the money. So far, every company has um, reached the milestones. So we have not yet any company which has failed. Um, so um, that maybe shows that the mechanism works for both sides, for us and for the startup company. Yeah. So um, that is our investment mechanism. As we know, that is sometimes it's also we have, of course, sometimes um, you need some kind of a range until they have done the product because we know um, startup companies, um, you cannot be always on time. Yeah? I cannot say, okay, on the 1st of October, then you are done. Maybe you need the full October then, yeah, or you have, you have 30 days to prove it then afterwards. <clears throat> or when there is something wrong or did something wrong, or maybe an employee um, failed. Um, they or, or a pandemic hits and it just throws off all of your timelines for everything. Exactly. <laughs> so do you, I guess then you're having pretty regular meetings with, with these, these companies or these projects. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things we learned when we talked to Galaxy Digital is they also set up regular meetings with the uh, blockchain as a service group at, at uh, B1. Uh, is that something that, that you require uh, your projects to do as well? Or, or do most of them have in-house uh, EOS or EOSIO experts that can know how to utilize or can figure it out themselves? Yeah, yeah. Um, to be honest, of course, when we started our fund, the first question was always from the startup companies, can we have access to the tech team from block one and Bloxburg, of course. Yeah. So um, maybe you won't have your money. That's, that's nice that you invest in us, but can you also give us access to the tech team? And that is, of course, not in any case possible because then there was overrun, of course. Yeah. When we say, okay, here's an open line, open link, you can send over any questions you have. Then uh, the tech team in, in Bloxburg, I think they get overwhelmed and then um, so that will not work out. So we have a contact there um, where we link the startup um, in which we invest with a tech guy from block one. And if they have specific questions, which really is specific, yeah, and they cannot solve it by themselves, um, then they can reach out and can ask them and um, yeah, maybe they can fix it. Um, basically, 
we have, it depends on, on which maturity the company is. We have weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, or quarterly calls with our portfolio companies. We have a reporting um, system, of course, uh, um, agreed in the investment agreement. So every company is sending out reports to us. That's, of course, it's typically venture capital style. And then we have at least at least monthly, if not be weekly calls with the EOS VC team in Hong Kong, where we explain in which company we have invested, um, which is in our portfolio uh, radar, uh, which is in our pipeline, um, which company has great success so far, for example, Upland, Bombard, yeah, as you mentioned already, um, which are a little bit behind the business plan. So that also block one knows where the portfolio is mm -hmm. right now in which in which shape, so to speak, is but also we 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 have to pre provide for our limited partners um, typically um, um, monthly and quarterly reportings anyway. So, but yeah, we are we are close to our portfolio companies. Um, um, we have also many board seats um, if available. We get a board seat um, and um, work very close with the companies. With some companies which we have only maybe under 10%, maybe have only five or six percent, we are more passive, of course. We are not the active investor then. Yeah. Um, for example, um, in Next Big Thing AG, we have only four, four percent right now. Um, the the lead investor was a German insurance company, one of the largest um, insurance companies in the EU or not even worldwide. Um, so Talangs Group is invested in Next Big Thing AG. So they are the lead investor there. So in this company, we are not so active like in other companies, for example. Yeah. So it depends on definitely um, how much how much do we invest, um, which mm -hmm. percentage do we get, and if there are board seat available, are we lead investor or are only maybe only the smaller co-investor? Yeah. It depends on. So on, on the just curious, you mentioned next big thing, and that's one of the ones I had done a little research on before this uh, for our, our interview. Uh, and I, I found that did FinLab uh, invest uh, 12 million euros, or was that a combined, uh, combined. investment combined. group there? Okay. Combined. combined. Okay. Well, so it was, was gotcha. total round. The total round. Um, we do not invest. Um, or, or we have invested now in 17 companies and um, the 18th is coming soon. I cannot say the name of, um, right now, but we have um, uh, a company in our uh, pipeline and performs diligence already are reading the investment agreement. So I think we will, we will publish a new investment uh, soon, at least in the next couple of weeks. And, but right now we have invested in 17 companies. Our typically investment amount is between two and three million. So the simple <laughs> math is you, 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 you can figure out Finlab, how much money, Finlab's how much money famous, we have invested so far. I, I've been following EOS and EOSIO since 2017 and FinLab from the start of the ESVC. And you guys are famous. Every press release seven says figures. seven figures. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> seven figures. So yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. Confident, yeah. Confidentiality. We, we, of course, yeah. We, the startups um, don't know, don't want that we mm -hmm. pay the, the the exact amount of money because when you see our percentage, then you can with simple math you can see yeah. what was the valuation, which the uh, um, startup companies don't want uh, to be published. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I think for us, it's it's better when we have uh, for next round um, and valuation discussion with new investors. It's always better that we have not published um, what mm -hmm. we have invested before. So uh, I'll do the math then real quick for the users. Two to three million, 17, 18 projects. You're somewhere between 35 and 50 million euros invested. You always do it in euros, correct? That's why I'm, I'm looking here on the website. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's exactly it's exactly what you said. It's between 35 and, and uh, a little bit more in euros. Yeah. Um, so and so do. you had a hundred million dollars. Uh, what's the conversion rate to euros these days? I, I'm not not entirely certain. Um, it it was it was uh, the total the total fund amount could be 100 million, but we have not raised the full amount um, of 100 million. So it's a little bit below 100. Um, it's it's more in the direction of I would say 80 80 million. Yeah, um, 85. Clarity. 85. 
So, um, so we have invested, uh, Block One has invested. So, um, uh, yeah, right now we still have room for new investments, definitely. Um, we, um, as I mentioned, our pipeline is, is so that we can invest in two up to four more companies. So at the end, our fund should have around 20, 20 plus companies. That is, I think, um, um, uh, a size which is good because we have to reservate some money for follow-on rounds. We will not dilute mm -hmm. in any next round because we start pre-series A, series A, so series B, series C is coming and we want to um, have some um, dry power also for these um, follow-on rounds. Um, when we see potential, of course, when there is no potential in a company and maybe it makes not sense to invest in the next round, we will not do it. But for example, in Upland, um, we have invested already in two rounds so far, um, as we see great potential there. And when other companies will come, we will always look, is, is, this, is this worth to invest a little bit more? And we work, um, yeah, what I would say is, I, I definitely like to work more with the existing portfolio teams we have already in our portfolio, as we know these guys, we know the founders, we know how they work already. Um, then to look desperately for other projects which maybe do not attract us much. So when there is a possibility to invest in a new company, we will do so until we have 20, 20 plus companies. But if not, we are super happy with our portfolio right now and maybe will support and assist the portfolio companies we have invested so far. Um, and um, that is, of course, always based on a situation um, when they come to us and ask for for a second round or third round, yeah. Mm -hmm. So with so so, it sounds like you're so hands on with these projects. You have great relationships with the portfolio projects. How much collaboration do you encourage? Any collaboration between the portfolio companies? Like for example, Wombat's got a great wallet. So if another project's doing something that could make use of an integration directly with that wallet, do you make those connections happen and encourage the yeah. collaboration? Of course, of course. That is our also our 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 goal or our, our, our investment. Uh, able to speak um, to say, okay, can we combine the portfolio companies we have already invested in? So can we link to these other companies? Of course, we did this. Um, we uh, linked Bombard and Upland, for example. Mm -hmm. yeah? um, Timeless, Gapless, um, with Agora, for example. A cash link uh, we have invested in is uh, in close relation to Agora, for example. And uh, I can, yeah, I can say. Just Any like the companies? knowledge that they could share too. I know I met Dirk from Upland back at the San Francisco EOS hackathon. And he was telling me about his idea and we, we stayed in touch for a while after that. And he, co he covered some big hurdles with getting uh, app store payments to work for a blockchain based game, for example, like he tackled that problem and obviously uh, overcome it. So like that experience could be shared with the other teams. Does stuff like that happen too, where it's like, yeah, you just, yeah, exactly. It happens. We also, had our, yeah, in 2019, before COVID-19, of course, in October 2019, we had our really, really great portfolio day. So we invited all companies to Mallorca, so the, the Spanish island, you, you know, um, and so we had a great weekend together with all portfolio companies, all founders, and we had great meetings, great conversations. So everybody knows each other. Yeah, everybody knows, okay, this is Dirk from Upland, this is Adrian from Spielwerks, Wombat, this is Jan Karnat from, um, from Gapless, Timeless. Yeah, so everybody knows each other now. And if they have questions, we, we, we appreciate and, or we encourage them to say, okay, please interact by yourself. Yeah, so um, we invested in all these companies. We think it's all great companies, all great founders, all great uh, uh, team members here. So if you have questions, reach out to Dirk. You don't have to ask me. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, so we encourage all these companies to work together. And if they have technical problems or maybe they have a solution uh, which they can share with other companies, please do it. Yeah, don't be shy. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, We like that these companies have, have, have collaborations. And um, we want to bring all companies to success, even if we know right now not all companies will see the goal line, yeah, and will have mm -hmm. this success like maybe Upland will have at the end, yeah. Um, however, uh, we work with all companies uh, very close together. We like all the founders uh, we invested in, 
And um, it is one of our, I would say, investment thesis to, to bring subtle companies together, to have uh, cooperation, collaborations, and to leverage the portfolio, so to speak, yeah, by um, doing something together. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And um, we know uh, that it, it, it works. We know from, from, from Dirk and others um, that uh, people are interacting and, um, yeah, without us, of course. That what, is, is great. I mean, what about Block One? Do they ever come to you? Like, it, it seems like they're heading in a like direction of financial products. You guys are a fintech investment fund. Like, do they ever come to you and say, all right, we're really looking for someone that could solve, like, identity? I know you guys invested in Helix, which does identity. I don't know, like... Do they ever come to you and just say like what their needs are? Can you, do you have any companies in mind that you're looking at that can maybe help fulfill like our vision as Block One? Yeah, I think um, Block One is doing their own own investments and have their own investment thesis. And um, we, of course, presented all companies in our meetings to Block One. And uh, we appreciate, of course, if they choose one for their own solution. If not, it is what it is. Yeah, um, I think we will have success also without a direct uh, link or direct collaboration with Block One. Um, but it's more like we present the companies to them. Mm -hmm. than, um, because I think um, the AOSVC team is a little bit more independently from, from Block One, what they are doing in, in Bloxburg or, or New York or in um, Arlington, I think, where they're sitting now. Um, and um, yeah, we do our investments. Of course, they know what we are doing. Um, they have the the info, uh, info materials. Um, they know what these companies are doing. If there's something which um, catch their eyes or they find very interesting, they can reach out to us. But I know that Bren, for example, is definitely investing in much, much bigger tickets. Um, you know, maybe they have invested in Northern Data, um, a mining company um, also here in Frankfurt located, um, stock listed. Um, but much, much larger ticket than we can invest with our fund. Um, mm. we, will, we will stay with our focus on early stage CSA, pre-CSA, seed, maybe CSB, but I think with our investment tickets, um, the seven-figure amount you mentioned, <laughs> which we invest always, yeah, it's, it's, more a CSA, it's more a CSA approach than, than we can start the CSB, yeah. I love the fact that you get your you get your uh, partners and your and your projects together and have them all meet and 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 mingle and and there are synergies there. Uh, does Block One ever do that with the EOSVC funds? Do you ever get in the same room with the Galaxy Digital funds and and the SVK and the EOS Global funds at the same time and have some sort of similar conversation? Um, also, to be honest, we have uh, our conversations with Block One EOSVC team. As I mentioned, um, I met, of course, any other uh, fund managers in the past already, but there are not so many synergies because um, the money is coming from the same pocket or bucket. So co-investments makes for me not many sense as um, Block One invested in us, invested in, in Galaxy and SVK, for example. So to have co-investments with SVK or Galaxy, I think makes not so much sense. Yeah, um, as it's it's more or less uh, the money coming from the same same bucket. Um, SDK, uh, I met these guys, yeah, one or two years ago. Um, they have a smaller fund. Um, I told them if they have something on their table which they cannot invest in because maybe it's too large for them already, they can share with us. Um, I did the same with um, Galaxy because I know that Galaxy is investing definitely larger tickets and it's more focusing on gaming. We have not a specific sector or industry focus. The fund definitely was set up for investments in the EU. So mainly our investments are based in Germany uh, or UK so far, but we have invested also in Sparrow, which is in Singapore based or Upland or Moonlightning in the, from the US. Um, so, but I know that Galaxy is more looking into the US market, right? And um, I don't know what, what US Global is doing. I think there was more for the Asian market yeah, designed. And uh, so, yeah, the synergies are not at, as you maybe would be assuming that, that we have um, conversations every week or every month. 
So um, I think every every fund has finds their own investment style. Uh, we have our investment style. We have our investment thesis. Galaxy has their own investment thesis. SVK. So um, the important thing for us is that Block One is happy with us. Um, that we do a great job here, and um, the EOS community hopefully is, is happy with us. That we um, support the EOS community and uh, companies which are active in this market. So that is what we want to do, what we want to achieve, um, and what others do. We cannot. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's, I, I think the not, I think the community will not, not our business, so to speak. Yeah, I think the community will be happy, uh, especially after hearing your interview and, and your support for EOS. You know, you, you mentioned uh, the, the B1 being happy with you and you mentioned how you find projects. Just curious how B1 found you. You know, how did they choose you? How did they, what was the introduction like? How did, how did uh, Block One determine that, that FinLab was the, the partner for, uh, to trust, you know, for a $100 million EOS VC fund? I think you guys yeah. were the third ones announced also after Galaxy and I think Tomorrow Ventures, I th and I don't think yeah. they're VC anymore. But so you guys yeah. are the second then. This, this story is, is pretty easy, easy to explain. Um, uh, Christian Angermeyer, um, one of the founders of Finlip AG, he was already invested in Block One. Um, Finlip AG also was looking for an investment in Block One, but because of the structure of Block One, it was not possible for us to invest in block one directly. But at this point, uh, we got access or contact to the founder team, Brent Bloomer and um, Andrew Bliss at this time. And uh, we met these guys then in, I think it was February, 2018 in Munich on an exhibition in Munich. And then my, my colleague Juan and I, we pitched for Brandon and Andrew and said, okay, we are, we are a startup investor. We are a venture capital company here from Germany. We invest in fintech companies. Blockchain has a lot to do with, with, with fintech. And I think we can bring some value here on the table for you guys. And yeah, um, as you can see, it, it worked out. So they trusted us and said, okay, we, um, we like these guys. And um, afterwards, we agreed on a term sheet. And then they handed over to the AOCC team in Hong Kong. And then we agreed the terms of the fund and uh, the terms of yeah, how much money we should invest and how much money should invest Block One and what is our um, main criteria for the fund. Uh, we agreed all this in a term sheet and then um, yeah, um, set up the fund in 2018 and started to invest. So definitely the connection was coming from Christian, Christian Angermeyer, mm -hmm. um, because he was invested in Block One already and um, he, yeah. A connected. fun, a, a interesting yeah. note of Christian Angermeyer. He, um, he's kind of like an advocate for EOS. He's tweeted about it before. He's mentioned he's an EOS token holder. He's a Block One investor. So you tweeted uh, back in July 2018. You mentioned that Christian Angermeyer actually was the one to introduce Peter Thiel to block yep. one to lead that investment round back in 2018. That's a, yeah. that's an interesting story there. Yeah, uh, I think I think P Peter and Christian are, are, are close friends. Uh, they in the past they did a lot of investments together, and here Christian was already invested in block one as I mentioned, and I think um, then he connected um, Brand Bloomer with, with with Peter Thiel, and um, I think Peter Thiel invested also money in in block one. Um, yeah, Christian, maybe you have read our uh, announcement from December 2020. 20. Um, he sold all his shares in Finlip AG. So he's no longer a shareholder of Finlip AG. Of course, we still are close friends. And um, I, uh, yeah, would say uh, I, I will work with Christian on, on other projects because he is invested in, in Iconic as well. We are invested in Iconic with, with Finlab AG. He is invested in Next Markets. We are invested in Next Markets. So we still have a, a business relation, um, but he's no longer shareholder of Finlab AG. You know, you mentioned, and, and, and Zach mentioned that, that Christian is a, a bit of supporter of EOS for a long time and Block One and, and FinLab. Uh, and actually, says he owns EOS. Just curious, does FinLab have any cryptocurrency positions? No, um, we are not allowed to have cryptocurrency positions. It is for tax purposes and also the fund. 
the FinLib EOSVC fund uh, does not hold any tokens or coins. It's also for tax reasons only. Um, it's a, a special uh, tax law in Germany, and um, this would be infected the, the, the fund, which we don't want. Um, I have US tokens um, run, of course. So I think not so many as Christian has, as we have. Uh, we, we, we talk, we talk <laughs> you're you're going to be a boss, man. People are going to love you after this. We, 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 we have different pockets, I would say. Yeah? Um, so um, uh, Chris has a little bit more than I have, but um, no, I, I have, of course, US tokens, but by myself, um, um, it has nothing to do with the fund, so to speak. Yeah? Um, mm -hmm. I invested already um, uh, before we set up the fund. Um, and since then, of course, I was restricted. Uh, I did not any investment mehr, uh, in, 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 this, in the tokens. Um, however, uh, yeah, um, I think Christian is, is, is still a big fan from EOS as he is an investor and he's also a close friend to Brandon. And um, yeah, hopefully uh, we could give back trust that we have, he had uh, given us when we, he presented us to Brandon. Yeah. Great. So just, uh, I think we're getting pretty close to a lot of our questions here, but we, there's been a, a focus on regulation and compliance lately. We talked a little bit about how you're, you're financial backed. How do you feel, or have you ever looked into the decentralized finance and, and what do you think that, that, uh, is that something FinLab would ever, ever look into? Yeah, we know it's, it's a big topic. It's, it's, uh, a big thing so far outside there in the crypto market, decentralized finance. Um, honestly, so far we have not yet invested in a company which is really active in a DeFi sector. Um, and also on our pipeline, there's not really a pure DeFi company. Yeah, I think Wombat, Womplay, um, there are some kind of, of DeFi, but of course not yet what, what, what the really DeFi enthusiasts or mm -hmm. fans would say about DeFi. Um, we see a lot of potential there. Um, however, um, we as FinLab AG, as with the fund, have not yet invested in. Um, maybe in the near future we will do, but I think in terms of the valuation from these companies sometimes, and as we are an early stage investor here, um, I think they will not met our criteria, yeah, uh, to be honest. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is already <clears throat> too far away from, from valuations we can justify for the fund to invest in. What, what about projects that plan to launch a token? So like in Ethereum, for example, a lot of these early stage uh, VC investments happen and then maybe a year or two later, a project launches a token. Um, I remember um, 2018, you guys invested in uh, Vion, which was a, like spinoff from Instafo, who you're still working with. And they had initially planned, they initially had plans to, I think, ICO or launch a token. And that was one of the only EOS VC investments I ever saw or heard of that had anything to do with any tokens. Um, and, yeah. you know, Upland doesn't have a token. Wombat yeah. doesn't have a token. Oh. So what, what's your uh, rules as far as tokenizing as, projects? Yeah, as, as, as I said, um, our fund criteria or for tax process allows not directly uh, investments in tokens. So we do not invest in tokens directly. When companies issuing a token after we have invested in the equity, of course, we cannot, um, yeah, we, we cannot say don't do it. Yeah, when this is mm -hmm. um, what they say, it's, it's, it's possible or necessary or, yeah, they, they, they need it for their business. Um, they can, we cannot reject this um, um, idea, mm -hmm. but we will not invest directly. And, and Veon was a special thing. Um, basically, the investment idea was Veon. But then we decided to invest directly in the mother company in Staffo. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, uh, Veon was uh, merged with, with Staffo, which was the best situation, I think, or best solution. And um, they also um, ejected uh, the, the token sale. As we said, really, guys, I think it's, it's not helpful. And uh, sometimes it makes no sense to, to issue a token. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... It's funny. I, I, did I ever, Stefan, I was at this event. Veon flew me out to Munich for Oktoberfest in 2018 for this little like one day conference. Were you at that event? 
Yeah, yeah, I know. We went to, did you go to the uh, Oktoberfest after the event? Yeah, yeah, I know. So yeah. I, we met each other then. I was there. Yeah, but I think the Veon founders or the Veon team was not not so long active for the company. Yeah, because, yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't stay in touch with them. I was just, I, I remember that event. Yeah. And when you, you told me how many people were involved with FinLab at the beginning of this call, I was like, man, there's not that many of them. He had to have been there. I'm glad I got to ask. Yeah, and you're, I think you're also at B1 I, June too. So I cannot say there. some. I cannot say the, the, the details because it's confidentiality, but um, uh, yeah, we, we, we didn't find an agreement uh, in terms of salary, founder shares, and so on. So, and um, yeah, it, it was it's something. Deals don't always work out. No, you don't have to elaborate they moved too much on. further. They moved on, but with the Instafo team, we were super happy. The company earns, um, earns money. Um, they have seven figure uh, a sale so far so it's one of our most or um, yeah it's, it's one of the best performing companies in our portfolio in Stafro uh, they are based in Germany and um, yeah so we are happy with these guys even if the first idea was definitely to invest in Veon yeah mm -hmm. cool <laughs> just curious you mentioned uh, that organization and you know troubles associated with it uh, what happened to moonlighting I, I remember moonlighting be around but i haven't seen much from them lately yeah um as i said not every company will reach the goal line or will have success at the end um moonlighting is not failed um they uh, merged with carrier gig maybe you have seen the announcement so moonlighting is now merged to carrier gig which are doing more or less the same like Moonlighting before. But um, as we can see in a COVID-19 crisis, you can see some winners and maybe, I will not say losers, but some companies which are not on the bright side. Yeah. So when you see right now the trading apps like Robinhood in, in the US or we have um, good performing trading apps here in Germany as well. So these are the winners of, of COVID-19 because everyone was home, was bored, and then was trading equities or uh, natural resources, whatever it is, gold, silver, metals, uh, cryptocurrencies, um, also Coinbase and all the other um, crypto exchanges, um, uh, I think was benefiting from, from, from the crisis because people was home and, and uh, yeah, um, because it was bored, they, they, they traded and, and, and played games. So um, Moonlighting was not on a loser side, definitely not, but it's what hard definitely to attract customers and clients in a, in a, in a freelancer market, um, especially in the US, as you know, the situation right now in the economy. So, and there was no way that they could stay as a company by themselves. So um, we looked for a partner we had a lot of um, discussions and um, yeah arrangements, and at the end, uh, Jeff Tannery, which is a great guy, which is a is, is I would say is a friend of mine. Yeah, so um, I think I, I like Jeff. He likes me, um, and Moonlight was one of our first investments we did. Um, I, I met Jeff in London, 2019, and uh, we invested in him, and uh, yeah. Um, I, I was happy that he find Carrier Gig and we could save our money because we merged now Moonlighting with Carrier Gig and the journey goes on. Of course, a little bit slower than expected with the blockchain angle. Yeah, um, I think Carrier Gig is also interested to utilize um, blockchain EOSIO in the future. But um, right now, they are more looking for customers and clients to grow the business and afterwards um, will add on the blockchain angle. Um, however, the company is still there, it's still active, even it's no carrier gig and not moonlighting. Yeah. I think uh, from this conversation we've had, it sounds like there's been a lot more wins than losses. You're up to almost 20 portfolio companies that are still there. You name dropped a couple of them earlier that sound like they have things that we might see in the next couple of months. Um, what, are, what are you most looking forward to for 2021 as far as your companies, uh, your portfolio companies? Is there anything specific that you wanna call out before we uh, wrap things up here? Um, no, not, not, not directly because it's, it's of course, I'm, I'm always under the confidentiality agreement here. Um, however, um, what we wanna see in 2021 is that we um, bring more products on a, on a blockchain, 
yeah, um, that we have the achievements, we have agreed in our milestone agreements um, that companies um, will grow and uh, will earn money at the end. That is what we want to see. Um, as you mentioned, um, so far, uh, we have not only winners in our portfolio, of course. I cannot say this, but definitely true. Um, and in the venture business, that nobody will will believe me that we have only winners. Yeah, um, <laughs> we we have also companies which which have um, right now more uh, uh, flat uh, development, I would say. Yeah, but um, we have no no write down so far on our fund. That can I definitely say. So every company is still active. Every company is still working on a product. Every company we invested in is still there. And um, we will see what 2021 will bring. Of course, the COVID-19 situation is not easy for companies which are looking for new funding rounds. Yeah, as you cannot mm -hmm. directly uh, before the investors, yeah, of course, Zoom meetings or Teams, whatever it is, yeah, it's it's nice and, and it's possible, but um, uh, the interaction directly between the investors and founders, it's I think mm -hmm. it's 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 crucial. It's, it's, you're you're yeah, investing it's, in the team and the people just as much as the company and the idea, and that in-person engagement is exactly. a, a big part of that. So I, I get exactly. that 100. percent Exactly, exactly. You um, so for example, Spark. Spark was our first investment, I think, which we did totally virtually. Um, I met Stefan Buschbacher only once in February 2020 at the blockchain exhibition in London. But the other team members, Dan Barry and Joff, um, only via Zoom or Teams. And that was really the first investment, I think, we did more or less virtually. Yeah, but because there was no possibility that we could travel to the US mm -hmm. or they could travel to Frankfurt. Hope we will not have these investments. Uh, yeah, never want to do that again. In the, in the future, though, we have um, at some certain point, uh, yeah, the possibility to travel again and to meet in person. Because as you mentioned, um, key is always the team, the founder team. Yeah, and we need to have trust in the team and the founders. And for us, it's really important to have a, not, we don't need to have to be close friends to the founders. That's not, the, um, yeah, that's not the investment thesis, of course, or it's not necessary to, to invest in a company. But at least we, <laughs> we need to like these guys and say, okay, we have trust in these guys and they can, can yeah, bring in return of invest or they can build this product that they have promised in the sales pitch. So um, for us, a team is always key. And I definitely can say we have to all of our founders in the portfolio, a close relation. And um, that is, I think, makes, makes the work much easier. Also, when you have some criticism, yeah, you can say, okay, listen, guys, that was not what we have expected or this was not what you have um, told us. It's not what you have uh, printed in a pitch presentation. That means not you cannot criticize these guys when you are close friends, but um, it makes much easier the work um, or the weekly, be weekly calls when you know on the other side there are people you like and you want to work with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I would like to just state I, I, I did a lot of research kind of going through a lot of these projects uh, just to uh, in preparation for our interview and and. I love some of these uh, press releases that you guys put out. I just want to read a couple of them. Uh, this is from the Agora uh, uh, co-founder and chief product officer with access to the EOS blockchain. And he says EOS blockchain, we hope to achieve greater flexibility and less dependence on just one blockchain protocol. Following the ongoing updates to EOS IO, EOS is becoming a serious competitor to the Ethereum blockchain and is enabling us to cover even more use cases with our product I, I've got one while well, ensuring that the scalability of our solution, you know, there's other ones like cap trace. I, I I'd like to talk more about cap oh, trace yeah, here, yeah. here in mm -hmm. a second, but uh, they are, they're a, a, a custody solution. Uh, and they're now yeah. looking at distributed ledger technology and they say cap trace utilizes the EOS IO blockchain to facilitate secure efficient services on top of the company's already strong 
core listing. So great job on these press releases. Uh, I don't know who's doing them for you, but you're doing a great job. Uh, in, in all of my research, and I'll ask you these two questions, it's not pointed. In all the 17 that I looked through, there were only two cases, uh, or maybe it was even 18, because I'm confused about one, that didn't have any mention of EOS or EOSIO. So one of them was uh, a whammo. A whammo? Yeah. A whammo. And I couldn't yeah. find any, 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 any discussion at blockchain or, or relevance no, whatsoever they, there. So. They have, they have built an insurance, an insurance product totally on a blockchain. So that's totally B2B. As I mentioned to you, um, you will not find this company on, on uh, social media discussing their blockchain solution. Mm -hmm. they right. And they shouldn't necessarily. Yeah. They, 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 they're approaching insurance companies. They are active in Africa. And um, so the product is live already. Is um, is yeah, it, it works. So now we are looking for insurance company which will use it. So there is a lot of demand, and um, hopefully we will hear from Avamo soon more about their uh, blockchain technology. Maybe maybe I can I can link these guys also to to um, the Block One marketing team with a, a built on EOS IO series. You know these series. Mm -hmm. um, I think. Upland was already live there. I think um, Axum was already live on, on built on EOS IO, I think. Um, works. There too. Works. Yeah, maybe I, I can link um, at some certain point um, um, Aramo that they can present a little bit more details or insights what they are doing on a blockchain. Yeah. Great, great. It's good to know because that's the only one I couldn't find any, any information or, or even uh, uh, data on. What about Blockchain Helix? I couldn't, you know, Blockchain Helix it has blockchain the name. Uh, but I couldn't find any relevance to what blockchain, uh, you know, information, how they were, how they were well, they, utilizing and which blockchain they were using. You mentioned this company earlier a little bit because they have an ID um, identification. Uh, right. That we talked about yeah, voice and people and, using. And, and this should um, also be um, available on, on EOS IO blockchain solution. So far, they are still working on this project. They are, a little bit behind the business plan, definitely. I can say this here, um, but um, Oliver Nagler and his team um, are great founders, um, and I think they will bring this to an end and to success. Um, so they will um, offer their identification services for uh, many blockchain solutions, of course, and um, one of them is, is EOSIO. Um, yeah, I was. A little bit, I would, I was not, um, when, when Block One uh, published that they have uh, registered for an identification, um, uh, yeah, it was patent, I think, yeah. I said, okay, mm. it was just, just a couple weeks after we have invested in, in Blockchain Helix, yeah, and... Mm -hmm. um, I speculated on the connection there, and I guess you must have speculated that they'd want to do it too. I... Yeah, you take the words out of my mouth. Yeah, yeah, I'll say <laughs> so it. Was, we, we said maybe there is a combination we can link together with um, Block One Voice and Helix, but but yeah, that just shows think, good strategy on your part, honestly. Just that you uh, like you know what's going on enough, you know that they're looking for this, you know you invested in it, and to put the pieces together, like you couldn't ask for more. So yeah, so um. Yeah, uh, Avamo and, and, and Blockchain Helix, even if they are not yet uh, so super active or so super insightful um, what they are doing, um, they do something on the blockchain definitely. I can say this. So just briefly, since we talked about those two, uh, CapTrace, you know, that was kind of an interesting uh, custody solution for, you know, yeah. some, uh, can you just briefly talk about it? Yeah, um, we see this, um, you know, right now the custody services for 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 stocks or shares, we say in Germany, is for stocks, is is old-fashioned. Yeah, um, you have a custody uh, provider um, in Germany. It's Clearstream. Um, it's a, a subsidiary of Deutsche Börse. And when you issue new shares or when you issue shares in general, you have a share certificate which is stored at Clearstream. And afterward, if you have registered shares you need a, a custody service company like CapTrace, for example. But we see the future definitely more in virtual assets. 
And for virtual assets, you need custody services and also shares can be issued maybe in the near future virtually, so to speak, not like the old way with a certificate and so on. So maybe directly on a blockchain and you can trade on a blockchain your shares directly between you and me and you don't need these intermediaries and um, these larger companies like maybe, for example, Clears. So as we see a lot of potential here, we have invested in cap trades. Um, the good thing here was they have already an existing business. This is also what I have forgotten to mention when we start our, our conversation here um, one hour ago, um, our investment thesis. What we like is always a company which has sometimes an existing business model and have earned money already. And now maybe bring something new on a blockchain or have a blockchain angle and is not dependent too much on this product because They have already a bread and butter product, so to speak, yeah, and earn money already and can now focusing with our money, we invest in the company on this blockchain angle. And Captrace is exactly this company. They had already an, an existing business model with the custody services for stock corporation companies here in Germany or in the EU. And um, now they um, create or they develop a product on a blockchain or a product um, which we can store or which we can trade afterwards um, virtual stocks, so to speak, and um, in a new way. So what the future will bring here in this, in, in, yeah, in this topic. Yeah. So, and that is what we also did with, with other companies, Moonlighting, for example. Moonlighting had already an existing business when we have invested in the freelancer business. And they want to bring all these um, um, yeah, for, 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 for trust and, and for security, they will bring all these, these um, profiles on a blockchain. Yeah, and we said, okay, that is a, is a great opportunity. You earn already money or you have already an existing business model. And now you have a blockchain angle and bring something new on a blockchain. And you are not dependent so much on development, this product to earn money. And um, so that is what we... Uh, what we have also uh, on, on our radar that companies with have already a business model and now explore a new business model, business angle with, with a blockchain solution. So that is what we are also looking for when we invest in companies. Great. No, I appreciate that insight. And, and I agree with you. If they've already done one thing and have other uh, forms of income, uh, it, it makes a lot of sense. Man, I just... Honestly, I don't know if Zach has any more questions. I don't but have I any more. I'm very satisfied yeah. with this whole conversation. Uh, this, this, I, I, I just want to say, you know, thanks from the EOS community, honestly, Stefan. Uh, FinLab, I feel like, has been a better steward of the intent of what we were told the EOS VC fund was going to be way back in, in early part of 2018. Uh, and so, Uh, even, even late 2017 uh, of what was going to be happening. So uh, I appreciate you guys, great stewards. Uh, I would like to, you know, when you, when you finalize uh, and, and complete your, your round uh, and, and get everybody invested and get all 20 X uh, companies, we'd love to have you back and, and maybe have one or two of them and, and showcase. Don't wait on, um, Don't wait on ESIO and, and B1 to help you out. We'll be glad to uh, give I'll, them a little bit of exposure. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned the built on ESIO blog article. I mean, it sounds like you're doing enough. I like we could have them on here. Uh, doing yeah, with EOS Rider uh, certainly is as well uh, well acquainted with Upland and some of the other ones. But <laughs> let's uh, let's see if we can't get some more exposure out there. And we do have uh, a bunch amplify of writers the, that would amplify love the to, noise, man. It sounds like yeah, a lot of good stuff's happening. There. We got to let people know about it. Yeah, it Definitely would be good would like for to, the ecosystem. Would, would, would like to do. I would like to connect more people with you from our portfolio. Um, I know you 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 did a, or you you do a great job um, with the EOS community. And yeah, hopefully uh, I can bring more companies to you and you can more say insightful about these companies when you have more details and, and, and facts and infos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what happens a lot of times is the press release comes out, it gets everyone really excited, like Gapless, for example, like hearing about Porsche, like that was awesome. But then you don't hear anything for a while because they got, they're usually heads down yeah. building and they're not ready to As market you know, yet. The automotive sector was hit it hard by COVID-19 mm -hmm. and as Gapless was yeah was more or less active in an in automotive sector and it's now changed to timeless so we changed the business model a bit but 
um, that was a, a hard fight and we are so super happy that they did it now and um, as you see the press release and um, their first product uh, Air Jordan Nikes was sold out in 58 minutes so just under, under an hour so we are super happy that this is now a transforming company uh, well yeah, so right. maybe uh, in the in the coming year or so, maybe every couple of months, every two or three months, uh, we'll try to reach out to you and get in contact with one of the, the EOS VC recipients and maybe set up just a brief interview about what they're doing. And then uh, we won't focus too much on it, but a little bit on how they're integrating EOS or EOS IO. So that, that'd be great. We really appreciate the insight and we appreciate you taking time out of your Friday night from your family to spend no it with problem, uh, no problem. us. I, I, really, I really appreciate that you have given me the forum here to speak about FinLab and, and the EOS fund. I know from Twitter and other social media accounts that uh, sometimes people was wondering what we are doing or what the companies are doing. So it's a great format here that I could speak a little bit more and hopefully bring some uh, details or insights to the community. And yeah, as you mentioned, uh, we can do it more often, more regular. And yeah, thanks for your time as well. Appreciate yeah. it. We always, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen in everything EOS, but we usually end them in a very specific way. Are you familiar? It's yeah. okay. You are, okay. Mm -hmm. We usually finish it with a go EOS. You ready guys? All right, we're putting the thumbs, we're putting our, we're putting our fists in here. What are we doing here? Putting our fists in. <laughs> All right. We're going to say, uh, dude. one, come on, man. All right. Come on, dude. That's goofy. All right. That's good. All right. All right. Are we doing it or not? All right. Let's do one on three. Exactly. Let's do a go EOS. Ready? One, go. two, two, three. three. Go EOS. Go EOS. <laughs> go EOS. <laughs> we right, appreciate it, man. Stefan, <laughs> thank you so much again. Stupid as ending.